Meet Aristotle. Aristotle lived a long time ago, from 384 to 322 BC. He was a Greek philosopher, a student of Plato, and the teacher of Alexander the Great. He wrote lots of books on just about every subject, politics, ethics, astronomy, biology, chemistry, physics, pretty good considering that a lot of those things didn't really even exist yet. He was so well respected that people pretty much believed everything he said, even though he never really proved any of it to be true. He was so respected that his name lives on in a word which we still use in science. Cool, huh? To have your name become an adjective. I mean, who can say what it might mean one day to be called Helmberger or, or perhaps Peter Senian, or even, well, Bobby? Or perhaps, if you're really lucky, you could be called selfish. So, Aristotle didn't believe in testing his ideas. He thought it, he said it, he wrote it, and it was called the truth. One of his ideas was that if two objects of different weights, for example, an anvil and a million dollar pie, were dropped from the same height, then the heavier object would fall faster. He never actually tried it. I mean, how hard would that have been to do? It took yes, me sir. about five minutes to gather up some materials, go find someone to drop them for me, and get the experiment done. But nobody tried it for about 2,000 years, really. Galileo was an Italian philosopher, mathematician, physicist, astronomer, etc. He spent a lot of his life in jail for proving Aristotle wrong. The legend says that he went to the top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa and dropped two items. Say, perhaps an anvil and a million dollar pie, and he found that they fell at the same rate. Did I mention that that word Aristotelian refers to an idea that may sound good, but is actually completely incorrect? So all Galileo needed to do was grab his stopwatch and head to the tower, right? Oh, right, no stopwatches. That could be a problem. What he needed to do was to slow down the rate that things fell. And so he did his famous pool ball and pre-manufactured inclined plane experiment, in which he proved that... Wait, what's that? Okay, so, well, he rolled a ball down a ramp. While he wasn't using seconds, per se, he did use his pulse to take time. He found that no matter what the slope or what ball he used, the distance traveled was always proportional to the square of the time. So at t equals 1, then the object would have moved some... Well, would have moved 1. At 3, it was 9. At 4, guess what? 16. Um, this doesn't necessarily mean that x is always going to equal the square of the time, just that it's going to equal some multiple, some constant multiple of the square of the time. That is to say that x is proportional to the square of t. So that meant that you could take a constant and associate it with the Earth's gravitational pull, some number that you could multiply by time squared to get the distance that the object falls. If we consider the ball on the ramp, gravity, the Earth, is trying to pull it straight down. That's the weight of the ball. The ramp, meanwhile, is pushing up with a force that is perpendicular to the ramp. That's called a normal force. Friction tries to hold the ball in place, while a component of the Earth's pull on the ball pulls parallel to the ramp and down the ramp. The other component of the ball's weight is perpendicular to the ramp and is equal and opposite to the normal. Using our handy-dandy trig functions, we find that the part of the force of the Earth on the ball that's pulling down the ramp is equal to mg sine theta. So he had managed to dilute gravity by the sine of the angle. We'll get back to that in a couple of weeks. What you need to see here is how what he found on the ramp applies to free fall. Look at this problem, which you will need to be able to solve to do the lab. First, we list our variables. We pick the right equation, that would be the one that involves the same variables that we're using in the problem. Simplify the expression, since vi equals zero, and hey, look there, we've got x is equal to a constant, one-half g, times t squared, the exact expression that Galileo was working with. Continue to solve the problem, we solve for t, plug in our values, and develop an answer. So now you know enough to make your name become an adjective someday too.